Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the house on this yet another blustery wintry day after having finished the second floor of our house. And I am very pleased with how it came out. We have the bookshelf under the stairs, some railings here. We finished the secondary bedroom with the platform bed and the little dresser right here. We finished the master bedroom with its wider dresser and some little details, including a tree. We then finished the chiseling room with a lantern hanging from a chain from the ceiling way up there. And we filled it with decorations and flowers, and it's ready for us to get to work. And lastly, we put a few more details out here. In addition to the bookshelves and stairs, we have a little throw rug on the floor. Very cute. Today's episode, we are starting a bit differently than usual, because I came down here and checked our pantry, and we are pretty low on food. So I've been working on feeding our animals to fatten them up so that I can harvest them gently, and also to breed the next generation of animals, both sheep and pigs. I'm not as concerned about the chickens because their meat output is tiny. But we need food not just for around the house here, but also because we are planning to go on a southerly adventure in the near-ish future, and we're going to need to be able to have meals we can take with us and need to preserve a whole bunch of meat. And actually, I think all of the pigs are a good weight now. Oops. Hello. Oh, we are all good weights. Can you all move, please? Thank you. And the sheep I know are all good weight, and we have a lot of pregnant ewes. This is good news. I can put this flax back then. But unfortunately for the animals today, it is time for me to acquire some of their produce. Produce, right. So I'm going to take a look and... We have a generation nine in here. Wow. Oh, you guys aren't pregnant yet. Okay, well, let's go ahead and we will fill these guys again. Yeah, there you go. We have Generation 9s, and we should have a couple 8s in here somewhere. Ah, there you are. Okay, so I'm going to leave one boar and probably two or three sows in here. Probably maybe three this time. So we'll leave you four alone. The rest of you, you're coming with me. <coughs> Superman. Huh. Weird. All this meat just appeared in my inventory. How'd that happen? Anyway, at least we now have enough to match up with some of this cabbage here. So for each full stack of cabbage, we're going to need two full stacks of red meat, and we have one extra. And then ooh, we can do some kind of apples. Let's do pink apples this time. And... I'm going to put these things away, and we're going to attend to a few chores here before we actually get into the meat of today's episode. First, let's cook some food. doesn't sound nearly as comforting when there are three of them just slightly out of sync. Oh well. Wow, those are rattling though. Let's go and get some of that rice flour and a couple wheels of cheese because I want to make some cheese pies to cover our grain and dairy needs. Let's do four pies. So we'll need 16 of these. 
And we'll need eight of these. Now we do the balancing act between paying attention to these and making sure our pies don't burn, so wish me luck. Okay, and with all that, we now have this many crocs. There we go, we added, what, 16 crocs, and we have four pies. I'm going to leave those in here. Now the pies I will start eating right away because they don't last super long. These will last, as you can see, 1.6 years, so they'll be here for a while. Now our next chore is going to be wind dependent. Looks like we don't have much wind. Understatement of the year. Well, in that case, I think our next task is going to be maybe wait till morning. If there's wind, we go and do some health hammering. If there's not, we go and shear and chop some trees. Okay, good morning everyone. Let's go and see what our prospects are today. Oh, we got some wind. Not much, though. That's, that's painful. Let's go get our shears and we're going to chop some trees down. After we close our door. wind has come back, and we're not done with the tree farm yet, but since the wind's here, I want to take full advantage of it while it's so strong. Wow. And I want to get working on some of our iron blooms, because we have a ton of them. Oh yeah, we are going to get some good work done today. Let's go ahead, and we're just going to grab a stack of you, and we're going to grab a stack of you, and we're going to fire these up. One. I am good at counting. Two. Anyway, I am going to be doing this for the next couple days in-game. I'm going to get as many blooms as I can get done in between bouts of harvesting trees when the wind dies down. So, I'll bring you all back in a couple days when we are ready to start the meat of the episode. But first, a message from our sponsors. Temporal Storms where you can get all the rusty gears you need. And that's what we're going to do. That's what I'm talking about. That right there. I think we have two of these guys, too. Yes, we do.
We have a third double header right here. Are you kidding me? Okay, a fourth double header? Are you kidding me? That is ridiculous. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, we spent all of our gears last episode, but this episode, we are coming home with 19 more rusty gears, 5 temporal gears, and 18 more flax fibers. That is a great deal. I have had so much better luck with these temporal storms lately. There were several where I'd kill, I don't know, a couple dozen drifters and get nothing out of it, including double headers. So this is a nice change of pace. I'm going to get everything put away, and then we are going to start in on the episode. Well, the main theme of the episode. The episode started a while ago. You know what I mean. And with all those chores complete, it is now time to start in on the third floor of the house at Lupine Ridge. And I'm going to do both of these rooms today. And I want to get to the attic, and if we can, I want to get to the basement of the tower, which isn't going to be anything special. I just want to get rid of those dirt blocks and put some granite stone and cobble there. And I might even do that between episodes if I don't get to it today. So the first thing we need to do is we need to replace these dirt blocks and probably some of these like areas over here with some plaster. We have 30 plaster. That's not too bad. I thought I didn't have enough. Weird. Now, these interior ones I'm going to leave for last because I want to... I'm not going to use plaster for these. I'll put it that way. And I want to just start with one of the base materials we'll be using. Because what I want to do with these rooms is I want to make a very heavily themed set of rooms. Over here, I think we'll have the night room. And it's going to be very dark, very cozy. Have sort of an evening motif. Maybe some stars on a very dark ceiling and a moon. Ooh, maybe some, like, alchemical moon sigils and stuff. And over here, we will store things for display, like things that we find underground. So maybe gems, maybe some of the crystals from either ores or even some of the olivine crystals. And then I'm thinking that over here is where we'll store our blackguard's armor because it fits sort of the theme of something that someone who has to go adventuring underground would wear. Over here, then, I want to have the day room. This room will be bright and cheerful, have greens and yellows and blues, have a sunny sky, maybe some alchemical sun sigils as well. And over here, I want to display things that we find above the ground. Maybe some things that we do find in ruins, but also things of natural beauty. Maybe some trees in, in pots, maybe some flowers and planters, and whatever else we can sort of put on display here. And over here, we will display our Forlorn Hope armor, because it's sort of bright and represents the best of humanity, or seraphanity, or whatever. So that is the plan for this room, but I do first want to cut off some of this, just so that the exterior blocks on this side here will still be plaster. Okay, I'll start with that, and then for these middle blocks, I think I'm going to start with some shale, some relief shale, for the night room side, to represent sort of the dark landscape. Relief shale, 21. Yeah, that's pretty good. Slate's good too, but it's sort of darker. And basalt, I think, is too dark. So yes, I think we'll start with some shale. And then, moving up from the shale, I want to have some sandstone, and we'll just take, we'll say that much. And that's going to be sort of the last glow of the sun on the horizon, and we'll take the bauxite to finish up that glow. And above the bauxite, we will have shirt, or that sort of dim glow that reaches up into the sky. And above the shirt thinking we might look at a block we really haven't touched on before, which is 
I forget how to do it now. But apparently we just cook it in a fire pit still. That's interesting. Yes, this hardened blue clay is sort of a nice, almost blue sky color of the night. And that can then fade into the darker black of, I'm thinking, basalt. But we also have over here some obsidian. And we know where we can get some more. But this might be an even better night sky color. I do like that. Let's put it together and see what we've got. happy with it. I think what I want to do is I might actually skip the sandstone and bring the bauxite down and then bring the chert rock down a little bit so we have some more of the black knight sky. Maybe even have the obsidian bleed down into the basalt by half a block. Let's give that a shot and see how it looks. Do you know what? I am not. I am not quite happy with this. I may have to rethink how we do the day and night rooms up here. And I might just, maybe just do the ceiling. Because this is kind of ugly, not going to lie. I am not liking how this turned out. This looked much better in my head than in the game. Maybe I will go with just the ceiling, but I would still like to have like a stripe of red across here. At least on this wall. Maybe we'll use this as an accent wall instead, and we will leave these walls largely alone, although I will need some more plaster then because 30 blocks ain't going to cut it. Okay, I'm going to tear this down and we're going to start on plan B. I didn't bring my gears with me. Oh no. Got him. I'm back. With money this time, I swear. I I'm not... Yes, yes, I have money, I swear. And... Thank you. Okay, we are home sweet home. And I have plaster in hand. And I'm going to go ahead and just get to work getting the basic shapes of the walls in. And then we'll come back and take a look at what we have to work with as far as rooms are concerned. And I'm going to leave this center wall alone for now, just because I do think I am going to be using some kind of stone. So I'm going to leave this shale here for the time being. Unfortunately, it's going to have to just be broken up. Oh well. So let's take a look at what we have in just a few minutes. And with a bit of fiddling and a couple minutes of work, I think I have the rough layout for these rooms out. So I had to fill in these blocks here because behind here is the roof as you can see, and this block and the one above it are both chiseled, and because of the proximity of the plaster to the roof exterior here, I did have to leave sort of one quarter of the block exposed as sleek cobblestone, but we can cover that up with our usual crown molding. And over here and over here, I have sort of enclosed these off to make little rooms. This one I want to use as attic access, probably right in this corner here. And this one, well, this one's a surprise. You'll see. I went ahead and made some doors, so I can pop those in here, like this. And we'll do one, I think from this side, we'll do it there, so it's flush. And then, not like that. There we go, and there we go. Now, this one's a bit of a problem, because we have this gap here. And that's because I wanted to chisel the wall away from the window frame so it wouldn't look so crunched together. But what I think we can do is I think we can make some trim for maybe both these doors and that way it'll look like they fit in. 
and that trim will be made of walnut. So all we have to do is a bit of this. And once we finish this, this door will have its own little trim. And it should fit right in. I guess we can also go ahead and fill in probably this block and a few others. Let's go ahead and do this and that. Hmm. That looks a bit funny. So maybe we will just bring this inside a bit. Yeah, I think we can do with that. I think we can live with that. Now for here... Ooh, do we bring the trim up or do we plaster it? Plaster. We'll never notice. And maybe for this one we can just chisel this down into a sliver. Just so it's flush with the door. But that'll be for later. And I have been thinking about what to do with these blocks here. I think the answer is we're going to do plaster on this bottom row. And then above it we will use our chisel and we will put in some fancier blocks that will turn into a an accent wall. One for this side and one for this side. And on this side, in the day room, I am thinking probably either kimberlite or that other green rock. And over in the night room, I am leaning toward probably some chert. But we're still going to need the andesite for the ceiling, for blue skies, and the obsidian. This is basalt, it's because it's chiseled. The obsidian rock for the ceiling here. And unfortunately, we are flat out of obsidian. If I can find it, there it is. And we are, actually we have exactly as much andesite for the ceiling as we have obsidian. So, we are going to need to go and retrieve some. Okay, we are back, and I had a momentary stroke of genius the moment I got back. Or genius, or at least less stupidity. But rather than having these doors be on this side of this block, and protruding into the rooms, and thereby necessitating blocks above them, I just moved them to this side of the exterior block, and now we have some very thin plaster walls here. And this way we have nice flat canvases to work with on the room's interiors. The second thing was, in the process of doing that, I realized that this sort of join I had here was really ugly. And so what I did was, actually it was over here, wasn't it? So all I did was I just had a taper right here, and I had it running the whole way down, and then I realized this door seemed awfully lost. So I just cut away the plaster to sort of give it a better entrance, and that kind of obviated the need for all but this little bit. So, with that being said, and that being done, let's go ahead and let's get these ceilings in, and then move on to this accent wall. We'll do the obsidian first. And again, here we are going to have some trim, so we'll be able to sort of add the obsidian to these two blocks and just do like the back three quarters here. And we'll put some walnut trim around the ceiling here just to sort of hide that little bit that would be left. First, we'll get the andesite in as well. And there we go. I'm going to get these little corner bits done, and I probably won't do the trim just yet. That will be to come later. But I'm going to get the accent wall in and see how the rooms are looking then. Just in case I have another mishap with not liking what I'm seeing. Okay, so I have the chert, and I have some kimberlite and that weird green rock, whose name I can't pronounce. And I'm just going to go ahead and put these up so we can take a look at them. I'm thinking the kimberlite should look... This would be chert, not kimberlite. I think the chert would look nice as a warm wall on this room. And then on this side, I'm not sure if I think that the green rock will work. It's kind of too olivey, like it's very olive. Whereas this one, kimberlite, 
The Kimberly actually isn't different enough from the blue, I think. Could be the problem there. You know, I think we'll go with the green rock. The, that one, this green rock. Because, like I said, this is just too similar to the andesite. It's going to blend in too much, whereas this one does actually stand out. And it is kind of foresty. It's sort of like a, more like a fall or late summer kind of color. Whereas this is sort of, well, this is more oceany than spring or summer. But we will do it. Let's go with it. There we go. I think that works. I also added this little fence out here as sort of a guardrail. And I do wish it would connect here, but maybe next version. And this will keep us from falling out to our deaths, as well as from peeking into the other room, except for this little sliver. So don't change over in this corner, and you'll be okay. And there we go. I think this is coming together pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and finish out the trim for the doors, both of them. And then we'll come take a look at this chair rail I want to do. I think that will definitely help. Absolutely. And I might actually put the chair rail one block up, just so we can put, like, tables and things against this wall. And there we go. I think it's looking kind of nice now. That border really helps. Now, about these ceilings, I have an idea. A couple ideas, actually, for what I want to do. So, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And I'll show you while I'm working on it, probably through a time lapse. But we'll talk about afterward the elements that I wanted to put into it. If I remember to.
Okay, everyone. Here we have the two finished rooms with their ceilings. I'll give you a closer look in a minute. And I was going to go pretty crazy with the stars in here, but I didn't want to clutter up the ceiling too much. And I thought a couple sort of dustings of stars would be better than going crazy, especially because the ceiling in here isn't going to have all that kind of detail or that kind of clutter. And so over here in the night room, we have a few speckles of stars. We have, I don't know, this could be maybe Venus or something, and this could be, I don't know, Jupiter or maybe Betelgeuse. And then we have the moon. And I put the alchemical symbols for the moon that I found online at, well, roughly one-third marks each way around, although these look like they're not quite at the one-third because of their shape. And for the sun, I did the same thing. Three different alchemical symbols for the sun. Just like that. And I was originally going to make these symbols all out of one color, but then I figured it would be interesting if it looked like these symbols were either occluding or were being brightened by the object behind them. Now with the moon, obviously I had to go the opposite direction, but I think it works. I actually like it a lot. So now, let's get into what we're going to put up here. Like I said, this is the Room of Night, and so we want to put the things that are found in darkness here. And this is the Room of Day. So we want to find the things and put them here that belong in the light. Let's go find some of these. I think the easiest examples of both of these are we have a very bright, sunny colored suit of armor here, and a very dreary night and underground color suit of armor right here. So I think we're going to move this guy into the room of night, and this guy into the room of day. Go ahead and do that. Now, where to put you? I am thinking, actually, right here. You're visible from the door. You're not in front of the window too much. But you're sort of still kind of front and center. I like that. Let's do this here. And I will replace this shield with my current Blackguard Square Shield, because we're going to make a new one here pretty soon. We'll do the same thing on this side. Put you kind of right outside the window there, and then... There we go. It's a start. And once we have the wrench in the next version of the game, we can change this really awkward pose. It's kind of weird having to walk around it like this. I never realized this sword is made of meteoric iron. Huh. Okay, so for the Room of Day, I was thinking that we can have some ancient pillars to hold some display cases like this. And then on the walls, we could have maybe some shelves or, you know what, yeah, we'll do some shelves. Maybe like one here in the corner. And... Maybe one under the lantern? I can't put one there. Of course I can't. Because of the chair rail. I knew that. But what we can do is... A couple shelves there. Maybe one here. And then... Maybe a couple planters. Like one right here by the door. Or even there. And then one here by the window. And then... We could do a couple shelves, and what I could do is combine these slabs that are the chair rail with the shelves that we have from downstairs. And that way we could have the chair rail here and a shelf above, and maybe some flower pots along the wall here. And here we go. We have our flower pots and our planters and display cases ready. Let's go and fill them with some stuff. I put some flowers in this chest over here, so let's grab some of those, as well as the trees, and let's find some places for them. Flowers in. Now, what else do we find on the surface? I am thinking seashells. Okay, after many painstaking minutes of playing around with the items downstairs, I finally figured out what things can and cannot go on shelves and in display cases. So, I have brought up our seashells for the display cases. Let's go ahead and drop, say, you in there, and you in there, and you and you. I'll take you out and put you in. And then we have you, 
and you, and you, and you. There we go. Now, for the other things that can go on shelves and cases, since we can't do tree seeds until next version, I found a few things that can. And I figured, why not go for things that are either found in nature, or which are man or seraph made. So we're going to put some resin from nature, some beeswax, we'll put a sewing kit, and maybe we'll put a bee nade, because that makes sense. And over here we've got maybe a couple arrowheads, we'll have a candle, some more beeswax, and maybe another bee nade. No, too big for there. Let's just put another resin there and then a candle up top again. And there we go. We have our little day room. Just a little display slash show off room. A showcase. There we go. And now for the night room. This one I think is going to be a bit simpler in a way because there are no flower pots for things that grow in the darkness. And so I think we're going to go mostly for display cases and shelves. The regular kind that you can put on walls and put things in. For the centerpiece showcases, which I do want to make sure are aligned here. There, I believe two blocks between. Yes. So I think for the centerpieces, I want to do a block of meteoric iron and a block of malachite. Just because I think malachite's pretty. I mean, it is. In real life, too. And then around the area, around the perimeter, we can scatter some more of these. Here, maybe say offset, like here, and here. Or would it look better to be in line? Let's make it a bit more geometric. Here, we can take our display cases, and we will just have to replace the chair rail. I hope no one notices. Actually, that's not too bad. I don't mind that. One here, and one here, and one here. And now we can go ahead and put some of the fun things that we found underground. Things like diamonds, and peridots, and say an emerald here. Let's put the diamond there. That way the emerald, which is green, isn't too close to the other interesting green things. And then we can have... I think we can put temporal gears here, can't we? Let's do one... So you're green too, but a different green. Let's put you... Oh, nope, we can't use it. Okay, that's fine. How about you? Nope, can't put that there. You can tell I didn't test these as rigorously. Okay... Well, I guess we'll just do the ore crystals then. And I brought a good number of them up here. So we'll put you in there. And we'll put maybe you in the back here. And then let's do one more here. And one more here. And as we get even more things to put in here, we will fill out our collection a bit more. You know what? I actually have more downstairs, so I'll bring this up now. Okay, back with some more crystals. So, there we have that. And we have... Let's say you for some color over in this one. We have a dull colored one. Let's put you maybe in the back over here. We have a couple others. And then I brought some of these crystals I forgot we had. You know, this crystal I was so excited about and then forgot about. Such is my nature. There we go. And then, ooh, the gold. Let's put the gold here. And then let's see what we can do with these guys. I hope they can go in the case. Let's do a small cluster. It's not bad. It's actually kind of bigger than I thought. Ooh. I don't like that too much. How about... Ooh, yeah. Hmm. That's going to be a big no for me, dog. Uh... Put on the wall. Do I like that? It 
it looks a little like glued there, but you know what? I don't I don't hate it. Let me put you over here then. Yeah, there we go. That's okay. I'm cool with that. Little splash of decoration. And with that, I declare our day and night rooms complete. These are just some fun little rooms so we can admire some of the things we've collected in our adventures both above and below the world's surface. I am very happy with how these have come out. Even if the walls didn't match my original vision, I think this fits much more what I was going for. Now, I believe we have some attic space that needs filling out, and right now it looks a little weird. So I think what I'm going to do here is we are going to just drop back down Grab some plaster, and I think we need some more larch, just to finish out the ceiling in here. I think first is going to be bringing this plaster up just a bit, if I can jump out of here. And that way it looks like this goes the whole way up, although if I do that, we can't get out of here. Hmm. Conundrum. Well, we'll figure something out. But regardless, I want to have the floor start a little higher than usual. I don't want it to be... Well, I could chisel these planks into the floor or the ceiling here and have our floor be here, but that is a lot of extra chisel work that I'm not in the mood for today. So, I think I want the floor to be basically here. Not there. And this way, this will give us enough leeway in case we decide that the hallway down here needs to be taller, or we need some more space on the floor below for something. We don't have to rejigger this floor for all that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get this floor in. I'm going to get the path up here sorted out. I'm leaning toward maybe a little staircase here or something. I don't know yet. I'll tinker with it and bring y'all back when I have something to report. Okay, I think I've got the space here sort of sorted out. I put a little roof in the closet here. And then this was a kind of funny little join. And I didn't want to cut into this too much. So we're seeing some of the backside of the ceiling and the trim there. But you know what? This is an attic space. That's okay. We're going to be seeing the backs of, you know, awkward places. And that's fine, I think. Now, since we're up here, I think let's go ahead and finally put in some roof support. Okay, we got some beams there. Let's put maybe a nice little pillar here. There we go. Right down onto our load-bearing wall down below. Should be fine. And then let's cut some of this up and put a few rafters in. I think rafters is the right word. My mind is blanking on it right now. I'm also going to just... Hmm. I was going to pull this block out, but that's going to look kind of awkward. So we're just going to use some of our plaster. We still have plenty of that left. And I'm going to go ahead and fill in these gaps here. And once I have both of those things done, we'll come back and look at cluttering this place up a bit. And like that, we have a an attic that is ready for some junk. We have some of that junk. I also think I want to move you off the floor and we'll just put you here, I think. And what I did in here was I added these oak planks. I figured we wouldn't want to be using any of our fancy interesting wood. We would want something sturdy for the roof, so oak for both the rafters and the cross beams here. And I did have to rejigger our stairs area because having it come up this direction, you would never be able to get up or down because of this part of the rafter here. So I just moved those around. It was pretty quick. But now we have a different problem. There we go. We have to duck to get out, I guess. Well, that's fine. Whatever. I think we can just trim these back a little bit. Does that work? Yeah, and then we can just do a bit of this. And no one will know the difference.
There we go. Nice and smooth now. All right. So let's get some clutter up here. We have a few things we can put down, as well as some that I haven't brought up yet because they don't fit in inventories. So let's just toss some of these around in these weird little spaces. And then the cobwebs, which I brought most of ours with us. That one's not going to work. But these just need to go scattered everywhere. And then let's go ahead and get the broken down chest we've been saving. Oh yeah, I forgot how fast you walk with these. And like that, we now have several collapsed or collapsing chests scattered around our clutter-filled attic. This is actually kind of very cozy. I like it. Now, I promised you all a secret room in the room just around the corner to my right here. And that secret is being prepared as we speak. I'm going to go and finish it up and clean things out and wrap it all up and then it'll be ready to show you. So I'll bring it back when that is done and we can take a look at it. Okay everyone, I think we're about ready. Are you all ready to see what is peeking out behind the door behind me? Let's take a look. So in five, four, three to one, we have a little privy or bathroom, complete with a toilet that someone has not remembered to empty out. Who? Where's my groundskeeper? Where's, where's my service? Where's? Oh right, I'm the only one here. So sad. But anyway, yes, we have a little bathroom up here so we can do our business. And well, I guess we're gonna have trouble, you know, cleaning it out, but we can if we want to little smelly up here, not gonna lie. And I thought it would be cool. So, in the vanilla game, unless you enable all of the chiseling, you can't get this lake ice, but I enable that so I can chisel this lake ice. And I grabbed some, actually several stacks of it, the other day. And I thought it would be nice to have a little foggy window here. You know, so you can see out and get some natural light, but you still have that privacy of not being able to have people see in. Granted, not many people are hanging out in the tower over there who can see in, but still, you know. And then of course we have a flower or maybe a little vase of, I don't know, dried lavender or potpourri to hopefully mask some of the stinkiness here. Pardon me while I eat in our bathroom. Mmm. Tastes kind of funny. Weird. And yeah, that is our little secret bathroom. Not so secret anymore, is it? And also I came in and put up this little railing on the edge here. I just thought that this would be a good safety feature to have. And this was a two minute job. I just grabbed the railing from down here, copied it, brought it up, and made a couple modifications. So nothing huge there. But yeah, that is, that is the main house complete. It feels really weird to say that. I have been working on this house for over half a year, like eight months now almost, and yeah, that's, uh, that's a weird feeling. But yeah, we finished the third floor. We have our night and day rooms. It's full of all manner of things from underground, and the moon in the ceiling, with all the moon alchemical symbols, which they kind of make it look like a spaceship. It wasn't really intentional. Oh well. We have the day room full of all the wonders that we can find on the surface of the world or that we have made. And we have the sun and its symbols in the ceiling. We have our little closet over here with the attic access. We have cluttered up the attic after finishing it off. And I think this actually looks really good, honestly. Kind of reminds me of my parents' attic at home growing up, but with a lot more headroom. And of course, we have our little privy, which I think is just adorable. So, that is that for the main house. That's a wild feeling, let me tell you. Very wild feeling. 
And I don't doubt that we will find small things here and there that could be updated or changed. Oh, like in you. This needs to come with me. We have a bed and a belt in here. What, what the heck are we doing with that? Anyway, everyone, that is about all we have time for in this episode of the Pitch Story Guide. I hope you enjoyed finishing off the main house with me, doing the third floor and the attic. We are, as I mentioned before, nearing the end of our time here at Lupine Ridge, and we will soon be preparing for a journey south. And I'm looking very much forward to that, but also to maybe coming back and taking a look at Lupine Ridge after we have been away for a while, and seeing it with a fresh pair of eyes. If you have any AMA questions I can answer as part of a video, drop them in a comment with the hashtag 20 questions. And if you play computer games and would like to support the channel, consider using my partner link next time we're shopping on the Humble Store, on screen now and in the description below. Anyway, as always, my name has been Corazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.